so here it is, the next big thing. Let's get it open. Now I'm trying to uh, use the lapel mic here, as a couple of people have asked me whether I would be willing to do live commentary rather than dub over the commentary after I've done the unboxings and the videos. So I'm giving it another try. I have tried it once before, but I'm not particularly comfortable with doing it this way, but I'll try it anyway. So what have we got inside here? Up. And a little note there saying it's from Samsung. A little returns bag. I do like this packaging. Very good. Nice coloured paper there. Let's put the box out of the way. And this container. And as you can see, it's the Samsung S3 Frontier smartwatch. Let's get this open. Off with the plastic. Always very satisfying. And there's a little security label there. And one that side as well. Let's do this nice and neatly I suppose. So let's have a look inside. And there it is. The Galaxy Gear 3 Frontier Edition. And I've got to say, it looks stunning. It's a lovely looking watch. We'll just take out the standards on there. And put that to the side a moment to see what else is in the box. We have a quick start guide, as usual, with the warranty information and so on. And as ever, off to the draw of obscurity with that. A little bag here. Inside the bag, you've got the wall power charger with the usual three pin UK version socket. And there's a micro USB there on that end. Also in the box you've got an extra strap. This is a small, you've got smaller wrists and nothing else in there. So now let's have a look at the actual watch itself. And just before we do, you get the stand, just a bit of pack in there. The stand for the watch, of course it's wirelessly charged. And the micro USB in the back there for the charger lead to plug into, and that's just a piece of plastic. It's actually set up as a stand as well, which is interesting. So you can put your power lead through the hole there, put the wireless charger in, and then put your watch on. Take out the rest of the pack in there. So the watch just sits on there like that. Very good. Let me put that to the side as well. And I suppose I'd better take off my Microsoft Band now, so I can put on the new one. So here we go. One thing I do like about the Microsoft Band is how easy it is to put on. I always manage to fiddle around and mess things up trying to get things on with a normal band like this, but this is quite good. It's a good quality feeling band as well. It's quite a nice rubberized texture. Solid. And there we go. Off with the protective covering. And it looks really good. Really nice fit. Now I'm going to take it off again. So let's get this set up. Just before we do though, I thought I'd just show you around the phone itself. 
So we undo the strap again. Now remove that little bit of protection of the front and also the protector of the back. On the back, of course, you've got the various sensors, including the heart rate sensor. On the side, two buttons. You have got the bezel, which moves. And, of course, the screen is a touch screen. So you switch it on. Leave it boot up. Now the quality of this is really, really nice. It's a really nice weight to it. It's a nice feel, the materials. It is a, a plasticky feel, but it's, it's not a cheap, nasty, horrible plastic that you get in some places. This is a really nice weighted, but not too thick and not too big a bezel feel. And as I said, the screen is touch screen. Now it says I have to install the Samsung Gear app, which is already installed on my Note Note 5, not the Note 7. I'm just going to open the phone up, put my password in off screen, and then we'll find the Note. There we go, it's already asking to connect. I haven't done anything, so let's connect. Allow the gear to connect. Allow it to connect to all the device's information. Confirm the pass key on there. Confirm the pass key on the phone. Connect it now to the phone. All this I'm doing in real time. And I'm still using the live mic rather than recording and dubbing later. So it's setting up everything on the phone itself and on the watch. Let's see how long this takes. Not exactly sure what it is doing. Probably copying across a lot of the information, like the telephone address book and some of my apps as well. The information of them rather than the app itself, of course. I'm not sure if it pairs passwords. So here we come to the agreements. Agree to everything. It takes about the same length of time of setting up a new phone, I think, but it looks a bit so far anyway. I would normally speed up the film at this point, but I want to show you this in real time so you know exactly how long it will take to, for you to set it up yourself. So we've got the Manage Notifications screen on. And we can turn off the notifications for the various things. We've got the alarm, calendar, clock, email, and all the rest of it. I'll do that a bit later, because there's a lot of applications there. In fact, no, I'll, I'll do that now so you can see what it's, what it's actually doing. So, Samsung Pay, I don't need that on. Instagram, I don't need that on. Hangouts, Google App. Don't think I need that on. I've got two Gmails there, so I'm going to turn one of them off. One's the inbox. I don't use email, I always use Gmail, so I can turn that one off. And I think that's everything. Everything else is switched off already. Yes, okay. Now, show while using phone. Show notifications from your phone on your gear while you're using the phone. I think I'll switch that function on. 
next setup is complete on the phone. Enjoy your gear. I hope I will. And there's various settings there and information about the phone, the battery level, memory level, and RAM. You can change the watch faces, install apps, install health to check your health at a glance. So we'll install health because this is replacing the Microsoft Band and the main purpose of that band was recording my workouts and so on. So that's health installed. I haven't used S Health. I always use Microsoft Band, they call it now. It used to be Microsoft Health. This is taking quite a while to install this. Up. Oh, there we go. So that's ready to use. So I think everything is set up now. Now there's watch faces. So I can choose a watch face. I'm going to see what's on there before I change any of this. Notifications, apps, send content to gear, send an SOS request, find my gear, gear connection, quick messages, and the Galaxy apps and the usual information about the gear. So that's all set up on the phone now. So let's go back to the watch itself. Let's try it. Turn the bezel clockwise to see the widgets. Turn it back to view the watch face again. And it's quite a nice watch face. Turn the bezel anti-clockwise to view notifications. Press the back key to go to the previous screen. The top button is the back key. Swipe down from the edge to view the status info. And swipe up from the edge to hide it. All straightforward. Press the home key to view your apps. And press it again to go back. Cover and touch the screen with your palm to turn off the screen. Cover and touch the screen with your palm to turn off the screen. I didn't do it for long enough, obviously. That's it. All done. And there it is. I do like that home screen, actually. That's a, a very nifty little home screen to start off with. So let's see if I remember. Pull down for notifications. App to get rid of them. Swipe to the side for the apps. Create reminder, my diary, my calorie count for the day, my steps for the day. Barometer, oh, that's interesting, considering the weather we're having it here at the moment. News briefing, media player, and then you can add further widgets. And we go back by pressing the bottom button. Press it again, and we've got our notifications. I won't go into the notifications because there's some private information in there, of course. And the top button. I can't remember what the top button was now. I think it was the back button, wasn't it? This is the home button, the bottom button. And the top button is the back button. So now we've yeah. got the software all set up on the phone. Let's have a look at the settings on the watch. Press the bottom button to go into the app drawer. Select the gear icon for the settings. First option, style, we've got the watch faces, and as you see there's quite a few already installed. I do like the default one though. You can install more from the watch or from the phone, but I'm going to leave it on that one at the moment. Watch always on, well I don't want that because it will eat through the battery. Notifications indicator, show the notification on the watch face. Well, that's on. I'll leave that on. Background style, which is basically the wallpaper, the background. 
various styles there. Let's just select a nice blue. Your font, font style. You got various fonts already installed. Font size. I'll keep that on large. The next is sound and vibrations. Sound mode, I've switched that to sound is on. So the sound is on now. You can switch it to vibrate only or to mute. Vibrate with sound. So that you've got a, a double notification as it were. You've got the volume settings for the sound. You can adjust it as much as you want. Vibration intensity is on strong. I'll leave it on there. A long buzz for calls and notifications just to make it a little different to alarms and so on. Ringtones, you can choose your own ringtone. So if we go back to glass and leave it on there. Ringtone and vibration. Basic. Cricket. March. Zigzag. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what that does. So let's have a, oh yes, it. you can't see this. Uh, you may be able to just about hear it. But it changes how the vibrations work. It's very strange actually because it comes at the back of your hand as well. So we'll leave that on basic. Recenter my hand there, so it's in the centre of the screen for you. So let's go back to that. It's quite a sensitive screen. Long buzz, notification sound, and touch sound. So when you touch the screen, it'll make a sound for you. Press the device choice next. So you've got S voice. Double press the home key, which is this one, of course. Or you can actually control it via your voice or gesture. You can adjust the touch sensitivity. Do not disturb mode. Auto open apps. Come to the display. You can change the brightness. I leave that on auto. And the screen timeout, I've set to 30 seconds. Come to the call function. You can use your voice to answer. Say answer or reject between the rings or vibrations. Messages. Send as audio using your voice input so you can actually send audio messages. Straight from the phone. Connections. Bluetooth. Wi-Fi. NFC. Turn the NFC on. It's automatically off by default. But Samsung Pay needs NFC and so do many other apps, so I'll leave that on. Alerts, flight mode, location. I've turned location on because I use all the various functions. I don't see why you uh, have this function if you don't use it really. I know people are worried about tracking and so on, but in some cases it can be very useful uh, if you have an accident and so on. You send off an emergency call, people can track you. Security then, you've got your screen lock, just as you got with your phone, you might want to lock your screen on your watch as well. Accessibility, that's for those with visual and hearing impairments. Input is your keyboard, so at present it's using the default Samsung keyboard. You've got your keyboard settings, English UK, I'll leave it on that. Power saving. If your battery is getting low, you can switch into the power saving mode to make it last a bit longer. Your gear info, I won't press that because it will give you all the various uh, information about the gear itself. And connect to a new device is the last of the options. So the phone is now set up. The watch is all set up. If I slide down, you got connected to via Bluetooth and you can change into airplane mode. You can go to the audio and so on from this screen. If you swipe back across, you get your weather. 
swipe this way and you get your various apps and so on. What I've noticed on this home screen as well, this particular home screen, is if you tap it, you start the timer going. Press it again on the X there to stop it. So there we go. And that's the unboxing and the initial setup of both the phone and the watch. The next video will be a review of how it performs with the S Health and how it uh, goes day to day with it. Until then though, from me, thank you for watching.